This question highlights an important factoid you need to know for both their step one and the step two, okay? Very vague, very short vignette. That's the point. This is what the USMLE wants. It's not my opinion. That matters. I've talked about this numerous times. It's what's on the NBME that's important because that's the USMLE, okay? So we have this question here. Uh, before I get into it, Hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it if you're new here and share this channel, help grow this channel, okay? So share it with one of your friends. Really appreciate it. Hit the like button. Hit the bell if you want notifications and find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Now, let's start the question. 72-year-old woman, she clearly has a, an, an anterior MI as per the elevation in B2 through B4. She has a precipitous drop in blood pressure from 150 on 90 to 75 on 40, and she's cold and clammy. Questions merely just asking the acid-based disturbance. So she, this is cardiogenic shock, okay? Now, this, this is not going to be a long video, all right? USMLE wants you to know that in states of shock, this is not unique to cardiogenic shock. I've seen this for hypovolemic shock. I've seen this for septic shock, okay? And the USMLE is either going to ask you directly, like I've done here, or they're going to integrate the biochemical, the pH bicarb CO2 into the question. And you'll look at the values and be like, hmm, what the fuck's going on there? Okay, this is the factoid you need to know. In states of shock, if you are not perfusing your vital organs as well as you should be, and hence you're not delivering oxygen to those vital organs as well as you should be, it makes sense that you have increased anaerobic respiration, right? And in turn, you'd have increased lactic acid production, right? Hence, lactic acidosis causing metabolic acidosis is something you frequently will see in the setting of shock. As I just mentioned, not unique to cardiogenic shock, but you'll, for example, you'll get someone who has hypovolemic shock and you'll see the bicarbs 18, normal range 22 to 28. You'll see the bicarbs EG. 18 or 20. And you're like, hmm, why the fuck's the bicarb low? Or in a question like this, they'll give you a low bicarb. And you're wondering like why the bicarb's low. It's lactic acidosis. I've seen it asked directly as just lactic acidosis as the answer. And they'll tell you the patient takes like you know, medications include aspirin and people are like, hmm, is it like salicylate toxicity? Wrong fucking answer. It's lactic acidosis. Okay. It's not hard. So if they were to ask you this in terms of pH, you're simply going to select a down arrow for the pH, normal range 7.35 to 7.45. So you just select something under 7.35. Bicarbonate, as I said, would be under 22. That's metabolic acidosis. And then your CO2, normally 33 to 44 millimeters of mercury would go down to compensate. Okay. So you'd have metabolic acidosis with respiratory compensation, and it would be high anion gap because this is one of the mud piles. So when we talk about high anion gap, we take sodium. If they give you these values, and they will sometimes on harder questions, especially 2CK, they'll give you sodium, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to take the bicarbonate and the chloride, okay? Bicarb plus chloride. You take that number, and then you subtract it from the sodium, and that gives you your anion gap, and it should be 8 to 12 milliequivalents per liter. That's the normal range. So if you have lactic acidosis, it'll be 13 or greater, okay? So mud piles, methanol, uremia, which is renal failure. DKA, fenformin, some drug you don't have to worry about, iron tablets, isoniazid, lactic acidosis, ethylene glycol, salicylates, which is aspirin. Okay, we can do long, lengthy discussion here, but the L, lactic acidosis, in the setting of shock. Okay, you have septic shock, you see the bicarbs low, you know it's from lactic acidosis. This is your just concise factoid for USMLE. Not every fucking question I make has to be long and beautiful and convoluted, okay? So important take home for you here. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.